Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is <clears throat> my review for American Horror Story and uh, Hotel. This is episode five. We start right off. Now remember, we uh, on the last episode, uh, Mrs. Lowe has actually been turned. She's been turned. We see her going into the hospital. There's that little boy that she's been working with who his parents did not believe in um, immunization and he is a little ass done got measles and bought the check right the fuck on out um, and she's actually going through her stuff because she really wants to feed and this kind of thing but you know again she's a doctor so she can keep a level head about herself she was she ended up sneaking into a room and drinking transfusion blood and that kind of thing. And then what she ended up doing was she actually took her ass into the room, pulled the shades, and took some of her blood. She took and uh, pulled a syringe of her blood and put it into the little boy's IV, which flatlined him and brought him on back and actually turned him. He made full recovery. Um, they're like, oh, it's a miracle, blah, 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 blah. She sends his ass on home. And the next time we see this little bastard, he literally has turned into a complete cold-blooded killer. Do you understand me? Cold-blooded killer. He then ate his mammy and his daddy's neck clean up off of him and just left their head sitting and then took and wiped his motherfucking mouth and took his ass right on to school. Ran, ran jumped on the school bus and left their asses laying out there. Um, and pulls the blood, but he didn't suck up with his greedy, yeah, he's a greedy motherfucker, but he didn't, didn't drink up, they was laying in, went right on to school, it's Halloween, kids all in their little costumes and things, he goes into the school, and it just turned out to be a whole little mess, he get with one little girl, you know, and you can tell he was bad, he's just a bad little motherfucker anyway, um, cause you can see, you know, the girl's like, what happened to you? This, that thing, and the other, and you know, they talking. He didn't lord her day up in the closet with some show and tell bullshit. He ended up, they gonna kiss. He ends up biting her lip. She gonna say, did you bite me? And he gonna say, oh, so he bit himself, you know, bit his own lip and said, okay, now we're, we'll be, we'll be, uh, even. You can taste my blood. Turned her motherfucking monkey ass. So, you see her, um, and the funny thing is, when he, when she bit, when he, she drank his blood, she got measles, and then flatlined, and then switched over as she was turned. Um, him and her called a teacher, little black teacher in there. Well, she comes in the room, because they said, well, where's them two at? They end up in the closet. So, you know, the teacher went up in there. Baby, he slit her motherfucking throat. And they snacked on her. And uh, they came up out of there. There's another teacher. Um, end up coming down the hallway. You know, to come in that room for whatever reason. Honey, well, they, by the time he got down to the room, all the children, you can see all the children had the measle thing flat line and was waiting and uh everybody got the snacking and carrying on everybody got a little snack and but he eventually that man actually because they slit his slit him and all that you know that's what i say stabbing he was stabbing folks carrying on just a hot ass man i mean he wasn't just he was that little boy was a cold-blooded motherfucking killer so the kids did get the snack enough on him, they done turned the whole class. So they got a whole class of little baby vamps. Um, the man made it the runaway. Um, some of the other school members, they locked the school down. The SWAT team, came. it was a whole mess. The SWAT team came and all of that. And um, they never really got a grasp on exactly what happened. They got it all, everybody out. But that little group, that little core group, Last we saw of them, they were being released to their parents, and they were all fine. Because again, remember, none of them was sick when they went to school, so they all went home. So they're going to be child of body count is going to go way up, way up, all with that the the stupid ass Mrs. Lowe and her good stupid shit. She didn't create a whole goddamn tribe 
of goddamn killer munchkins of her own. So I don't know how that's all going to um, gonna work out. But anyway, so all that's going on. So let's go to uh, the next thing we saw. We see Donovan. Donovan has brought Iris to Ramona Royale's house. Angela Bassett. And he basically tells Ramona his whole thing is that he wants to get back a Countess. He knows she wants to get back a Countess. Iris is going to be the way to do it because nobody pays Iris any attention. And Iris has now been turned. And Iris is over there. You know, she going through. And Ramona's like, yeah, she ain't drunk. So, um, she ain't drunk. You know, she, she knew she had been turned. So she's like, you're reckless, but I like it, you know. So now they're actually, they're going to work. They're going to work in cahoots. And Iris is going to be the inside person. So they send Iris on back to the, uh, the hotel. She goes in right away. Liz Taylor, the bald-headed drag queen, she picks up right away. Oh, girl, you look bad, honey. What's going on, girl? You look a mess. You know, she's all done up, honey. Miss Liz is done as usual. She told her, come on, girl, I got something for you, honey. He, she, he knew right away that she's all fucked up. But, you know, they're like best of friends. So he basically gives her some of them. Um, Countess's special blood from the children and it just brings her right around and you know she's still having some of her mor little morality issues and saying you know I, I, how can I do this how can I be feeding on people blah 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 I've watched this shit for 20 years instead of other but again you know that thirst of a vampire child that'll be enough of that bullshit that'll be enough so um we got all that going on so in the meantime, in between time, here we got this obnoxious couple that actually do end up coming in. <coughs> Excuse me. Obnoxious couple that come into the hotel and they just treat an Iris like shit. And that was the thing. Iris was already having a problem about the fact that she, you know, she doesn't feel like she's attractive. She doesn't feel like people pay her any attention. Nobody ever pay, you know, everybody just pays her dust. And that whole thing. And that's what uh, Liz Taylor was like, girl, I was really hoping that you could get you some eyeshadow or something. <laughs> but anyway, um, so she's having some self-worth issues. And she's like, I'm going to be stuck to this old broke down body and this old fucked up look. You know, that kind of thing. And, you know, never getting treated well and people just ignoring me and that kind of thing. And that couple just didn't help. They were just as nasty as they could be. But they check them on in. And after they do that, they um, they actually come on out. And uh, Iris and uh, Bowhead Drag Queen, Liz Taylor, they get to having a conversation, and then we finally are going to get the background story. Excuse me, on Liz Taylor. So I was excited. So it goes back to 1984. Is what happens. Uh, she checked into the Cortez. Um, she was actually a, a pilot. She was a pilot, is what well is what she was. Closeted. She's a closeted. Um, she wasn't really a closeted queen. She's a cloth. She's a cross dresser, is what she was. She actually liked dressing in women's clothes, but she was not gay. She, you know, just got her kicks on Route 66. She liked dressing in women's clothes. But says she mar I married this woman because we wore the same dress size. You know, naturally she she was ugly. You know, she had fucked up hair. You know, she had some Donald Trump hair without the 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 top piece. You know, so just some fucked up hair. Her hair was a mess and all that. The ugly motherfucker. And um, really disconnected. And the wife was saying, you were watching the weirdest shows. Because, you know, she was watching child some old gay ass. You know, some shit the gay folks like and all that. So, um, she ends up checking into the Cortez. You know, there's two other pilots. And they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to go. Kick it and this, that, thing, and the other. He's like, oh no, I'll just stay in the room, this, that, and the other. But he has his fun in the room. He go in the room underneath in his little thing, and he got his little white slip on, baby, and got his little, got this little fur coat on and carrying on, you know, walk around in the room. And what, boy, he had a fur coat first. He just had to slip on and had women appear, uh, pair heels on, walk around in the room. 
get in his life. Um, ordered some champagne. I told him to leave it outside the door. Pulls a little champagne in the door. And when he turns back around, baby Countess is standing there. Lovely, honey. And she basically reads him this right act. Tell him, you know, I see you, honey. He's saying, you know, why are you, um, you get out of here. This is my room. This, that, and the other. And this, this isn't what you, he started explaining himself. And she's like, mm -mm, honey, I see it. I seen it. She said, I've watched you, honey. And she said, you dress like a man. You walk like a man, but you smell like a woman. And baby, he got the breaking down, honey, and saying how ugly he thought he was and this, that thing, and the other. And that's basically what she told him. She had actually sensed that he was a woman trapped in a man's body, basically. That uh, everything about him was a goddess and it was a queen, you know. And the whole fact is... He, he, you know, again, like I said, a, a woman trapped in a man's body. But the thing is, it never took the sexual, the sexual part. That's how I told his story. It never took the sexual part. So the whole gay sex thing, none of that stuff ever took into it. It literally was more of self-identification, man trapped in a woman's body. And that's what she she smelled. She smelled it on him. And he cried, and then she basically sat there and worked when she had this fur coat, put this fur coat on him, baby, and told him, "You are a goddess." This, that, and the other, baby. She took that fucking hair and shaved that hair, and shaved him bald, baby, and told him, "You just smoky eye, bitch." And this, that thing, and the other. She put his ass in drag, in full drag, and it was teaching him some confidence and how to feel comfortable with himself. And she said, and he said, she said, "Now let's go on out." You know, so let's go on out to the Roxy, baby, and turn it, you know. And he's like, oh, no, I can't go out like this, child. She said, honey, goddesses are supposed to scream, period. And he's like, oh, no, I can't do it. She said, well, let's just start small. Go on down to the end of the hall and fetch us some ice, honey. She goes, sends him, he goes on down to the end of the hall, baby. You know, of course, he's very, very nervous walking out the first time. And I can actually, you know what? I can actually identify with a lot of this. Not not the whole woman trapped in a man's body because I don't have that going on. That's a whole nother thing. I never wanted to be a woman, child. I'm a sissy and I'm glad to be. I'm cool with me. Um, but the fact is, I actually, I do do drag. So I understand the whole thing of actually walking literally outside your door amongst people in full drag the first time. And it's, it's different. <clears throat> it's different. And it's just like anything else. When you think, like, like, is everybody looking at me? Yeah, motherfucker, everybody looking at you. It is what it is. And and not to say that I look a mess or anything like that, but everybody looking at you. It is what it is. Even if you're just a beautiful drag queen, people are looking at you. You know what I mean? So it, it's kind of a nerve-wracking thing. So I, I, I can get with that. And I was laughing at that whole thing because I, I was feeling it. And I laughed because he got down. You know, the first he went down the hallway. And it was very, very nervous. He ran into a lady that was doing some cleaning, room cleaning. And she kind of looked up because, see, he, old oh, ball hit the drag queen, looked crazy. It wasn't, you know, I didn't have that going on. Child was cute. But anyway, um, gets down the hall. And by the time he got to the end of the hall, got the ice, baby, it was, it was done. Everything the contest was telling him, it had settled in. He had gotten very comfortable very fast with his being baby when he came back up the hall baby she was giving it baby she was strutting miss lizzie i said girl get it honey so she was getting it on back up the hallway and wouldn't you know it because you know that's how countess does things he runs into the other two pilots and they go right into the thing now remember it's 1984 so they're real stupid you know oh you're a fag this that thing and the other and uh, I drink some uh, some of his Sprite do you fucking have AIDS and all you know all that dumb shit and it's so funny because you have that dumb shit that goes on that was in the 80s early 80s when you know HIV and AIDS was coming out everybody didn't know what it was and all that but you have people who still react this way, who still say the same. I have a fucking aunt. My mother's sister still says stupid shit like this to this day. And she got 35 years retirement with the goddamn school board. So, you know, of course, she's been around to know about HIV and what, you know, the whole development and shouldn't even have those type of feelings. But my aunt is still just as stupid as a bag of fucking tricks cereal and she still says dumb shit like that but that's a whole nother time whole nother video i'll tell you about my aunt and her dumb shit
Um, but yeah, she says very, very stupid shit. And that's what they were saying. Real dumb shit. And they went on and they went on and they went on. And the next thing you know, baby, Countess pops up. And when I tell you she, you know, she has her little gadgets and her little gloves, she slit their motherfucking throats. Right there in the hallway. Shh. Fucked them up. I said, good. Shut up. They were doing too much talking. It was getting on my damn nerves. A dumb shit. Because that's when, um, you know, Liz was telling them, I am not gay. I am this, that thing. And, you know, she's trying to explain herself. They ain't listening. They just still with the bullshit. Child, contest shut them up. She slit their motherfucking throats. But that was that. So, this is how Liz was, Liz Taylor was created. And she's not a vampire. And Countess never turned her. She hired her. And she never went home. She stayed there. She's been working at the Cortez 20 years. She's been there. 20, 20 or more years. She's been there at the Cortez. She continued to send money home to take care of her family until the children turn 18. She just never returned home. And she's been a fabulous, funny looking, ball headed drag queen and just as happy as hell at the hotel. She works for, for Countess. She's not a vampire. So that's the background story on Liz Taylor. I knew it was going to be something interesting. But anyway, so that's that. So Liz Taylor basically kind of did the same thing as far as confidence building with Iris. She kept talking to Iris and telling her, girl, listen, it is what it is. You have to to take your own power for the most part. You got to feel good about you. You know, you got to get over whatever this hump is. You get over it. And why don't you start with that cup? Mm -hmm. Teach them how to learn how to learn, you know, how to learn how to treat you like you're supposed to be treated. Baby set her loose on them. She goes on up to the room. Um, Him and her, they put up, we want some pate. Y'all, they gave some motherfucking cat food. I need some crackers. <laughs> Drop motherfucking shit on upstairs. She went up there. They was talking all that shit to her. She turned around, baby, and took the corkscrew. And stabbed the, the, the girl up in her throat, baby, and let her choke on her blood. And then took the um a knife and just shanked the motherfucking shit out of the guy. And then slit his motherfucking throat. And then she sucked them both dry. Then she was tired of hearing their motherfucking asses talk. And so was I. She did the shit out of them. And then they took their bodies. And her and Liz Taylor disposed of them right down the motherfucking chutes. Foop, foop fuck out of here with all that bullshit. Tore him up. And so now she's feeling a little better by herself. Boom. I was there for it. I was really there, there for it. Um, John Lowe. You know we ain't got no whole episode without talking about John Lowe. John Lowe done got fired. F I read, baby. He in there talking all this shit about this dinner party with these motherfucking serial killers. His boss says, see, I knew I should have never signed you back on five years ago. When you had that breakdown. And he's like, no, 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 no. You know, my son had just been taking blah, 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 blah. He was like, motherfucker, get on. Now, this is, you know, we going to do this admirably. You're going to walk away. That's going to be the end of it. Take you and that bat, bat wing duck crazy shit you talking. And you go the fuck on. And we're going to be done. And your retirement and all that shit will be here for you. Everything going to be cool. But motherfucker, you are bat shit crazy. And ain't nobody got time for it. Send him on. Last thing he says to him is, "No, nothing is safe. No one is safe." And um, he kept on because he when he told him that he thought that Patrick um, James Patrick Marsh was the the uh, the Ten Commandment killer. Now everybody knows James Patrick Marsh been dead nine hundred thousand years. I said, "Child, they put him right the fuck on out of there." He said, "Goodbye, uh, psycho cunt. Get on out of here." So he sent him on. Next thing we know, we see John Lowe. John Lowe done woke up in the bed. And guess who's in the bed with him? Old fried up here, Sally, with her junky ass up in the bed with him. And he's like, what the fuck, why are you here? You know, this kind of thing. And then she's telling him, oh, no, you won't, honey. No, you won't not after you bang this pussy all night. No, 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 no. And he's like, I ain't nobody talking. What are you talking about? Child, and they showed where he don't even remember because he didn't got drunk. You know, he was fucking around drinking. He's looking crazy. He's really losing it. Honey, he was getting Sally from the back, giving her a little taste, honey, and all that kind of carrying on. She told him, um, we are, uh, 
we are each other's destiny. It's going to happen over and over and over again. It ain't nothing you can do about it. I said, okay. So he done fucked himself all up. Then lost his job. He, you know, shit's just raggedy with him. So next thing we see Mrs. Lowe, and she's got this beautiful black gown on. Um, that I believe belonged to Countess. Countess basically tells her, because remember she told her, you work for me. That's what you're going to do. You're going to work for me. That's what you're going to owe me. And that's what she told her, you know, her and Holden. Yes, y'all going to be together. She got Holden, told Holden, go give your mother a kiss and all that. And told her, you'll be with Holden forever. And, um, but what you're going to be, that you're going to be the governess to all the children. You're going to bathe them. You're going to take care of them. You are going to be the governess to the children. And now, if that's too much, then bet you can go away. You'll, you'll go away and fuck you. You won't see hold it and it'll just be what it was. It'll all be for nothing. And she's like, no, 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 it's not too much. It's okay. And so she's like, hold it. It's time for you to go, go to bed. And she's like, well, wait a minute. We just were together. She said, well, honey, you two will be together for eternity. And told her going down. John, you see her going down. Now she does. She puts hold in the bed, but not holding got a double wide coffin, honey. And she sleeps in the coffin with holding. I said, child, just a damn mess. A damn mess. So that's basically where we ended out at. Um, I think it's going to be real good the next episode because I think they're going to actually tap into uh, Scarlet. Because remember, we don't know what's, what's going to fucking go on with Scarlet. Her dad crazy. He in the hotel and your mammy. Now that bitch is sleeping underneath the hotel. And then the thing is, and that's the other thing she told, uh, told Countess, but you know, John lives in the hotel and she told her oh you'd be surprised what you could get going on honey just from seeing each other and saying hello i said oh it's gonna be some shit so can't wait till next week you guys love this um again thumbs up thumbs down we'll see what's gonna happen you guys know how to work that whole situation if i left anything out leave it down in the comments and we will talk about it other than that I will see you guys next week. All right. Bye, guys.